Okay, yeah, the gradation. So, and then when you can, we can think how, and then we exactly want to mimic some real environment, degradation. And then we actually do, yeah, with the help of Jennifer and Nancy. So, in vitro enzyme, actually, this is some example of in vitro enzyme degradation. So, let's see, degradation in vitro discharge was examined by exposing fresh hydrogen to different enzyme and buffer. So actually, you, when you detail, look at the enzyme, they especially require specific buffer because not all enzyme can activate in the water, DW. They need some another specific ingredient to be activated. And then, this enzyme, they are losing, they are easily losing their potential as enzyme. So, you have to do that quickly. So this amount of gel loaded in mold after gelation, more unmolded, take out and wash the W access media, low by the protein, clean. Meanwhile, fresh enzyme, always use a fresh enzyme. Prepare a specific buffer following previous reported literature, briefly proteinase K, 1.1 unit per ml. Actually, when you buy enzyme from Sigma or other people, other company, they mention as a unit. So they mention like uh, one unit per one milligram. One unit per two milligram. Depending on the batch, they mention the unit. Unit, you can easily think about some efficacy of your enzyme. So in you, when you use the enzyme, they didn't write down milligram per ml. Always unit per ml. Okay. And then protein type 14, one, one unit per ml. Prepare at in 1.1 more sodium phosphate buffer, 0.37. When you refer this enzyme, they especially mention how which kind of solution you have to use. And colloid type 1, also different unit per ml. And then in this TS buffer, with 0.36 millimole calcium chloride, which is like this. After they making this, uh, Solution, sample or weight, initial weight, and then after water removal, using adjustment tissue, and then placing 0.5 ml buffer or enzyme solution, 37 degree, continuous agitation, using stirrer. Agitation means mixing. And then at different time point, sample or wash it, DW, and again weight. Wash it and then maybe he, she tried to remove some water, detectable water from the adjustment tissue, and again weight. A weight loss will calculate from the, this, okay? Initial, and initial minus later. Emitter enzyme, where you each condition. So in here, you can imagine, uh, when you want to measure the degradation from just DPBS, and then if you want to add salt enzyme, you have to use their specific solution. In case of this proteinase K, proteinase 14, you have to use sodium phosphate buffer. This can collagenize TS buffer. Okay. Sometimes you can mix them together. So let's see how much change. So DPBS, maybe 30 days, or maybe this yeah, this low, middle, high stiffness gel. So low stiff gel, maybe just 10% they'll degrade it. But I saw this low stiff, high, high stiffness gel, 10%, or low stiff gel, around 40% they'll degrade it. In case of this TS buffer, TS buffer is for collagenizing, right? When you see this one, same as DPBS, okay? And then what happens, you can put collagenized proteinase K, proteinase 14. They can target the peptide in silk, okay? So proteinase K significantly decreased glutein days. This is the effect of the enzyme. Proteinase 14 also. Collagenized type 1 and 1 unit, 3 unit, 5 unit. Actually, our gel consists consists of collagen and silk. 
So we, we choose seek target enzyme, collagen target enzyme. Collagen target or enzyme also they can show very much degradation fast. And then over increase of unit, you can see more fast degradation. Why we use different unit? We didn't know which unit can reflect the in vivo condition. So you, you can choose one or you can choose many things. Okay. So anyhow, I want to know that enzyme will enzyme, they can see different significant different result, right? So if we want to say our gel is not degraded that much, you just use this one. For our gel, they can be degraded by cell, then you can put this one. But so depending on your purpose, you can design. But the best thing is that always think about the in vivo condition, clinical condition. Clinically, what will happen? This collagen ice that can be secreted from your body, and this protein is KN14, uh, I'm not sure. Actually, this protein KN14 is from the certain bacteria. Uh, so you have to research, you have, you have to survey this kind of enzyme that can be secreted from your body. Maybe that can be a little, little bit secret, but if you, if you feel that this is a very low amount, low portion, and then you can also just measure this collagenized one for mimicking your in vivo condition. And then we yet want to know the in vivo degradation. So how can you do? We are using this with old red for degradation of say. And then 400 microliter each hydrogel was loaded in 5 ml syringe. And then size 12 millimeter diameter, so 3.5 millimeter height. So using this syringe, we cannot inject. We just um, syringe, use syringe as a board. So we put 400 microliter hydrogel, put in syringe, at the late, we just cut the syringe and then make this kind of uh, disc shape specimen. 12 mm diameter and 3.5 mm height disc shape. And then uh, anesthesia and then hair removal. Incision was made and then four pockets were made on lateral side of the bag. Two pocket left, two pocket right. So we can simultaneously it to four and number four. Easily implanted after cutting. And then at the sample implantation at disc, animal was checked daily. And then one to eight weeks later, yeah, we sacrifice. Let's see, the lizard. So this is some specimen. Oh my god. Specimen of your gel. So one week to eat LBX, collagen only, silk only, collagen shaker gel. You can, by your observation, collagen a little bit remain. Silk, somehow, they are very, we can, not very clearly detected. From collagen silk gel, you can see some little decrease. And here, no, nothing. We cannot see anything. From F and uh, low, middle, high stiffness, high stiffness, they can have more maintained. Okay. So we can plot like remaining weight from this uh, Jennifer. He maybe based on these images, maybe images where he took this gel from the tissue, they measure the weight like this. In vivo degradation. Maybe they, they are, he direct, she directly collect this one from the tissue, from the body and then plot it here like this. And then, from histology, they can measure one to eight weeks. Like this, like this, this, this. Okay? We make the same specimen here, but depending on in your subcutaneous tissue, you can see very much degradation. Okay? So in vivo, if you can make the gel or your material in the same same size, and then in case of very high degradable material, you can easily measure the degradation ratio in vivo. 
But in case not the hydrogen, just you can think about only solid material like PCL, it's very not easy to calculate the MPV degradation. But the best thing is that implant in subcutaneous and then collect one month or one year later and they measure their weight. That is the most easiest way to measure the degradation in vivo. Okay. Is there very implants inside of the rats? They are growing with their own cells mm -hmm. and other cells. Mm -hmm. They can penetrate our materials. Right. At that time, how can we measure the exam? Yes, at that time, we cannot distinguish easily from the deposit DCM yeah. and then this degradation. But fortunately, this gel, uh, if we explant this gel, there is not much of, maybe from our eye, not much of ECM are deposited. Yeah, but we, we, we are not sure 100%. Maybe somehow some ECM are deposited, but uh, when you compare the depo deposition amount from the ECM, from the your innate body, the degradation rate, the degradation rate is so fast that deposit the BCM, so we can uh, neglect this kind of deposit amount. But when you think about in case of metal, also in the when you implant the metal or ceramic, when you see some deposit, some BCM, you can easily remove using your finger or using your some scrubbing. Yeah, that can be done. So. There's some limitation of this in vivo degradation test, but personally, you can say that they are degraded certain amount, but not reflect 100%. Yeah. So yeah, finally we can see that this kind of two week, eight weeks, uh, eight weeks, or uh, uh, more also most of the collagen gel is degraded, so we cannot see anything. Silk, they make this kind of from the degradation. They make this kind of things. So we can see that silk fibrin also degraded in your body. So that is why silk is a very highly acceptable biomaterial. As of the light. And collagen, silk composition C, you can see this, this breakdown can be done in, in in vivo or it can be done during the cutting. But you can see like this not detected at this moment and then collagen silk just like this so if you check the in vivo degradation test also you can check some in vivo biocompatibility using this fibrous layer we can call this is fibrous layer so when this fibrous layer is thickening over time which is not good but this fibrous layer is thinning over time and then fibrous layer is not thick that much at the initial search time point, we can say that it's very biocompatible. Because always when you implant your foreign material in your body, your body feels, oh, I can be attacked by the foreigner. So they make some defense. This fibrous layer is defense from the, your body. So when, the, when they have more defense layer, which means your material is not good. Over time, the defense layer is thinning, which means uh, they are adjusting each other. So we want to highlight, uh, over time, this fibrous layer looks a little bit, actually thinning and thickening a little bit. But in here, we express it that from this uh, some degrade high degradation ratio, more fibrous, more fibroblasts that can be entrapped in this hydrogen. And then we can just say that this is a good sign for this material. Okay, in summary, uh, we know the host microenvironment, what can affect our biomaterial for degradation, pH, ions, or temperature. So pH, if you imagine high inflammation condition, pH will be low, around 5. Ions, maybe we have a lot of ions, okay? And then temperature, normally 37 degrees, but sometimes you can think about more high temperature, intentionally or unintentionally, okay? And target material, what kind of material you have? 
polymer ceramic metal and then when you think about the polymer depending on their structure IDI and depending on C double bond O CO double bond O or just carbon, hydrocarbon only depending on your target material you can imagine how they can be degraded by the water how can meet the water and then if you do not have any idea you just immerse the water you can measure the contact angle contact angle water contact angle when they low which means that your material have more chance to meet the water and then maybe when you, when you think about the hydrophobic hydrophilic material maybe you can just imagine that hydrophilic material they have more chance to be degraded by the water but we are not sure 100% and target enzyme silk proteinase K collagen collagen A type 1 and 2 and then MMP series esterase especially yeah, lipid and lipase or amyloase you can think about many enzyme how can you find Wellington site or you can refer other literature maybe they already found which kind which kind of enzyme can be targeted and then how much of time you incubate them best thing is to exactly mimic the real in vivo condition your material can be stay can stay in your body your whole life best scenario is to whole life incubation but we have a certain limit, limitation of time and then you think about how you accelerate how you accelerate the degradation increase the temperature from 37, 37 to 50 50 to 100 and then at the same time if you think about when you increase the temperature your material physical property should be maintained okay so you can determine the time and temperature at the same time and then surface area and liquid based on the ISO standard or well, you have certain rationale you can imagine how you implant your material how much of the liquid body liquid are there and how they are circulated you can imagine or you can refer to the literature and then how you weight the hydrogel or your material using freezing dry or just using adjunctive paper tissue or other way you can do okay so thank you so if you have any question okay so thank you so much so from the next week yeah we are talking about the this yeah summer and electrical property tg i uh, sorry summer and electrical property tga tsg dma or core point probe or led and then finally i'm going to share about how you prepare tm for nanoparticle cell or tissue okay thank you